listening to Coffee and Conversation with Recovery Advocate Network, the nonprofit organization that strives to address the staggering disparity in resource availability for individuals suffering from mental health disorders, processing disorders, addictions, trauma healing, and sexual identity challenges. Together, we strive to end the stigma associated with these challenges so that true healing can begin. Welcome back to Coffee and Conversations Between the Lines Blog Club Series. This is episode number 58, where Liz Vassie will read Joshua Young's blog post entitled, Navigating Through Grief with Grace and Growth. Liz is best known for her role as Wendy Sims during her six seasons on CSI and playing Captain Liberty on the TV show, The Tick. She was also a regular on All My Children, Two and a Half Men, True Calling, and Brotherly Love, to name a few. In addition to her acting credits, Liz is also a writer, director, and producer. Most recently, directing and producing a documentary entitled The Human Race. In addition to volunteering for us at RAN, Liz is passionate about her work with Big Brothers and Big Sisters Los Angeles, the Stray Cat Alliance, and 261 Fearless, where they empower women through running. You can find links to these charities in the show notes. Between the Lines episodes are written by guests who prefer to use their written voice instead of their interview voice to share their stories. As a reminder, the views expressed in any blog are the views of the author, and the purpose is to provide a safe place for the author's voice to be heard. So what are we waiting for? Fill up your coffee, sit back, and let's get started. Navigating Through Grief with Grace and Growth, written by Joshua Young, read by Liz Vassie. Grief is a journey that reshapes the contours of the heart in ways that are deeply personal and often profoundly misunderstood. My wife's experience with loss offers a vivid illustration of this. A few years ago, she faced the kind of moment that divides life into before and after, the passing of her mother. At her bedside, alongside her brother and stepfather, she witnessed the final breath of a woman who had been a constant source of love, guidance, and strength. This loss became a defining moment, not just in the way she navigated her path forward, but in her understanding of the finite nature of our time on this planet. In the immediate aftermath, the world seemed to pause, a silent acknowledgement of the void left behind. Yet it's within this void that my wife found a profound determination to make the most of her time here, to ensure that her life reflects both the love she received and the lessons she learned from her mother. This resolve led her to reconnect with friends and family, to strengthen bonds that grief had momentarily loosened, and to dive deeply into her passion for aesthetics. Starting her own business was more than a career choice, it was a tribute to her belief in the importance of shining from within and helping others to find their glow, both metaphorically and through their skin. However, the pursuit of her passion and the strengthening of relationships are just aspects of her journey through grief. They are the visible milestones on a path that is internally navigated and often obscured by the complexity of loss. Grieving is an ongoing process one that doesn't adhere to a timeline or follow a prescribed set of steps. For my wife, therapy became a crucial tool in this journey, offering a space to unpack the layers of her grief and to start healing the wounds left by loss. One of the most poignant aspects of her coping mechanism is how she keeps the essence of her mother present in her everyday life. Prior to her mother's passing, my wife would drive home from work and immediately call her mom to have a conversation but she could no longer simply dial her number to speak with her mom after she passed. It amazed me to find out that conversations with her mother didn't end with her passing. They evolved. The drives home from work transformed into moments of connection where my wife would share her day, her doubts, and her dreams as if her mother were right there beside her. 
This ritual became a testament to the enduring bond between them, a way to fill the void with love and memories, rather than letting it become a source of emptiness. This narrative underscores an often overlooked aspect of mental health, the profound impact of grief and the necessity of acknowledging it as a significant factor in our overall well-being. Too frequently, society expects individuals to move on quickly from loss, to find closure, and to resume life as if the fabric of their existence hasn't been irrevocably altered. This expectation can lead to grief being suppressed or ignored rather than expressed and processed. Dealing with grief is a deeply personal journey that requires patience, self-compassion, and the willingness to embrace the full spectrum of your emotions. It involves allowing yourself to feel the pain, sadness, anger, and sometimes even relief or guilt that can accompany loss, understanding that these feelings are all part of the complex process of healing. Seeking support plays a crucial role, whether through therapy, support groups, or conversations with friends and family, as sharing your experience can lighten the burden of grief. Creating personal rituals can also provide comfort and a sense of continuity with the loved one you've lost, whether it's through lighting a candle, visiting a special place, simply speaking to them in your own way, or wearing their jewelry, as my wife does. Channeling your grief into creative or meaningful activities can help process your emotions and find a sense of purpose amidst the pain. Embracing the changes that come with grief, rather than resisting them, can lead to growth and a deeper understanding of oneself and the impact of the loved one on your life. Throughout it all, practicing self-care and giving yourself permission to find moments of joy and rest are essential, as they offer respite and renewal during the challenging journey of grief. Grief, while a universal experience, is profoundly personal in its impact and manifestation. My wife's journey through the loss of her mother highlights the resilience of the human spirit and the transformative power of love and remembrance. As we navigate our own paths through grief, it is crucial to remember that it's not about moving on, but moving forward, with our loved ones forever a part of who we are, guiding us in unseen ways and inspiring us to live fully, just as they would have wanted. Thank you for joining us today with your coffee and conversation. We hope you've been encouraged and learned something from today's story. To learn more about today's guest, please check out our show notes for more details. Now it's time to remember to like this episode, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to ensure you do not miss future episodes. Recovery Advocate Network envisions a world where individuals with mental health challenges receive comprehensive and effective treatment without the worry of financial burdens to themselves or their families, all without the stigmas often present in society. We are proud that every individual work with RAN does so on a 100% volunteer basis. You can support the mission by making a financial donation via PayPal or Venmo, or email donate at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org if you would like to donate items for our next fundraising auction please visit our website at www.recoveryadvocatenetwork.org to learn more. Now, stay in the loop about upcoming events, future episodes, and more by following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X, TikTok, LinkedIn, and all major podcast platforms. As a reminder, the experiences and advice expressed in this episode are the host and guest's own personal stories and do not represent the opinions of any organization mentioned. RAN is passionate about opening the doors for all voices and experiences, not just those expressed in any particular podcast. If you want to share your experiences or expertise, we encourage you to be a future guest by emailing us at podcast at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org or submit a blog by emailing blog at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org. We also encourage you to comment on the episode so that we can continue to provide content that is most beneficial to the community. How do you do that? visit our website at www.recoveryadvocatenetwork.org and in the top right corner, click that comment button and comment. So listeners, what do you need to do? Pause what you're doing, subscribe, follow us. Please give us a like and a five-star rating, write some meaningful comments, and most importantly, 
Share these episodes with your friends. You never know whose heart you will touch, so please be a part of a reason someone has new hope today. If this episode was triggering to you, we encourage you to contact your support system, therapist, national and community support groups, the Global Crisis Text Line by texting 741-741 and or if in the U.S. dialing 988 to reach the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. If you're in the U.S. and need additional resources such as shelter, support group resources, transportation, food, and or a safe, confidential path out of physical or emotional domestic abuse, please call 211 or visit www.211info.org for assistance. Now, we know you are very busy, and we are grateful that you said yes to sharing time with us today. If you stuck to our three C's of engagement and listened to the full episode, then visit the podcast section of our website and leave the comment about the podcast, and you'll be entered to win an autographed copy of one of the books from one of our book club series, as well as a coffee and conversation coffee mug. So thanks again. Until next time, back to your coffee.